Hey guys, Razorblade Mango here, and today I am going to talk about Doom Eternal. Dun, 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 dun. So, a heads up, I'm just going to be talking about the single player campaign in this review. Uh, I tried battle mode for a little bit, and it didn't hold my interest long enough to make it a big focus in this review. So, uh, truth be told, and I know this is going to be an unpopular opinion, I greatly enjoyed the Doom 2016 multiplayer back in its heyday. And this new asynchronous stuff in Eternal doesn't really excite me all that much, doesn't really interest me. I prefer the traditional multiplayer of Doom 2016, so I just wanted to get that out of the way first. So, Doom 2016, it was one of those very rare games that I saw greatness in almost immediately. I had a really good feeling about it when I saw its debut back in E3 2015, and I loved everything I saw from that demonstration of it, and I had a fucking blast playing the closed alphas and betas for the multiplayer over the second half of 2015 leading into its launch of 2016, and I absolutely loved it when it came out at launch, and to this day, uh, it remains one of my favorite games of all time. I think Doom 2016 is a masterpiece. It is easily one of the best games of the decade, one of my favorite games ever, one of the best games of this console generation, one of the best first person shooters ever made. I love Doom 2016 so, so very, very much. Um, which, of course, made me excited for a sequel. And Doom Eternal, everything leading up to the launch of Doom Eternal, everything looked fine, everything looked great. Uh, I was excited to play it, I was really happy to get it. And Doom 2016 is really, really amazing. Doom Eternal is really, really good. Really fucking good. But, but, uh, but, I think it just barely misses greatness for me. Um, I'm not in love with it, but I really enjoyed it. And there's a lot of positives. So I'm going to go with the pos like traditional structure I do. I'm going to go with the positives. There are a lot of positives. Then I'll go with the negatives. So, this game is at its absolute best when it screams in your fucking face to move, 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 kill, 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 faster, 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 move, move, kill, kill, more, kill, kill, kill! And it's a brutal game, even on the normal difficulty. I'm not talking about just in terms of violence, which is fucking brutal in terms of violence. In terms of difficulty, the normal difficulty in this game is the hard difficulty in the last game. I mean, they've just cranked up the difficulty to a whole new level in this one. And I think the game, for the most part, works with that new bump in difficulty very well by giving you more options to work with, giving you more ways to savagely rip apart demons. And when you give in, when the game allows you to give in to the carnage, it feels amazing. It, it, it's just amazing. I didn't think this game could top Doom 2016 when it comes to sheer insane brutality, but it, it does. It does multiple times throughout its 12 hour campaign. Like I said in my spring 2020 games I'm excited for, this game just cranks it up to 11 and then snaps the knob off and it just, just goes fucking nuts. It's just, it's nuts. And you just feel this incredible high of, of adrenaline and testosterone. I think in a couple of years, doctors will discover that injecting Doom Eternal into your veins will cure erectile dysfunction. That That's how much unfiltered testosterone and adrenaline there is in this game. This game gives you a hard fucking erection. It's, 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 it's awesome. Um, so... Uh, audio visual presentation as always is is stellar just just world class stellar um the id id tech engine continues to do amazing things um it, it looks gorgeous creature design fantastic 
uh, art style better than ever gore effects uh, the new rip and tear thing that they have where you can see damage progressively get worse on the demons as hunks of flesh are being torn off by your shotgun blast it, it, it just wow it, wow 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 I, I'm talking Resident Evil 2 remake level of gore good I'm talking that level of good like it looks it looks astonishing um, Mick Gordon still doing the Lord's work with the soundtrack uh, it's it still has the super heavy intense metal themes you expect from doom but this time around I was also really impressed with the the quieter more um, low-key ambient ominous tracks and I thought even even when the game like any speed that the game is going at it, I, I think the music is fantastic I don't think it quite has the memorable melodies of doom 2016's music um, I don't think any of the music in this game quite reaches the level of something like BFG division but it, it comes very close in a couple of cases it, it's it's a fantastic soundtrack um, Bethesda and it are getting their money's worth by keeping this brilliant musician employed and collectibles collectibles are back better than ever and hunting for collectibles has been given a serious upgrade it was fun in the last game but it's even better here thanks to the amount of new collectibles and how well hidden some of them are it took me a good while to find some of these collectibles to look for the secret pathways and buttons I had to press and I really enjoy doing that I also really love some of the new mobility features uh, dashing around is that should just remain in the series forever now I can't go back to not dashing and the hook shot you get with the super shotgun that propels you across the arena to shoot an enemy in the face is so much fun to use. I think it's so much fun. Um, I also love now that the chainsaw, you use it a lot more liberally in order to get ammo. And I think with that new difficulty, there it adds in that a more strategic flavor to it which I, I which I really came to like I was a little unsure about it at first because I really liked the more open sandbox playground approach to doom 2016 but I've come to appreciate the more strategic element they've pumped into doom eternal with time um, certain enemies require certain weapons and strategies to take down and of course you'll have full utilization of them and in order to keep up with the the more the much bigger supply in in uh, much well, much bigger demand in ammo and shield and health, uh, the gl the glory kills are still back. Uh, I don't think they quite have the same impact as they do in Doom 2016, but they are they are great. Some of them just make me go ooh with how how vicious and violent they are. And I love the new flame belch thing that you get because when you light enemies on fire and shoot them, shield comes out. So that adds a whole nother layer of strategy to it to keep the momentum coming going forward. You've got the new chainsaw, like I said, liberally use it to get ammo, and that's great because ammo runs out a lot quicker in this game, but the game makes up for it by not having the the chainsaw locked behind. Oh, you gotta get the gas canister. Oh, it's a one-time thing. Oh, you gotta wait. But no, you, you don't do that here, which is which is great. Much bigger improvement. I don't know if I can go back to to only using the, sh the, the chainsaw as like a last minute resort like it was in 2016. I, I think I need that greater emphasis on the chainsaw now going forward, Ed. So, so make that happen, please. Um, now, with all of what I've said and how much praise I've been heaping on the game, it sounds like it's a masterpiece. Unfortunately, it has some key issues that hold it back from greatness. Uh, first off, I think the pacing of the game is choppy. So, Doom 2016 felt like a smooth roller coaster ride that comfortably thrusted you from one crazy set piece to the next, with some small but needed downtime in between. You can't you can't have the whole game being a a 12 hour insane fuck fest. You, you can't have that. It's just gonna get tiring after a while. You need some downtime, but while I think 
the long periods of downtime weren't baked into the overall flow of the game in 2016. They unfortunately are in Eternal. Um, I think the game maybe tried a little bit too much in the way of experimentation and, and quote, innovation, unquote. Because there are these long, needlessly padded sections that put a much greater emphasis on climbing and platforming sections. And the climbing and platforming is... fine? It's fine. So this time around, the game makes you climb many walls and hop numerous monkey bars and land on many platforms to navigate its platforming sections. And I'll give this, with, with the monkey bars, the monkey bars are also there during a lot of the battle arena sections. And I'll put it this way, when the game gives you more verticality to work with in terms of those monkey bars in the combat, it works. Like, I love the monkey bars in the combat, because that makes the combat even faster. However, when it makes you do these obstacle courses in order to progress in the campaign, it drags. And if the platforming was really enjoyable, like Titanfall 2's, I wouldn't have a big problem with it, but it's it's fine, but it, it focused on it way, way, way too much, way, way, way too long, and it's not as polished and refined as it needed to be in order to be such a big focus of the campaign. I mean, even in combat, the hit detection and clipping can be problematic when you quickly need to climb a ledge or land on a, a wall. And that can be really frustrating when timing and reliance on the game reading your position are the differences between life and death. Because there are multiple times where the game wouldn't pick up that I was trying to climb a ledge in order to escape a mob of enemies, and the game wouldn't let me climb something and I would just get swarmed and die. And that was cheap. I don't mind the game being much more difficult than the last one, but the game's got to work with me. You got to meet me halfway here. You can't be giving me buggy clipping issues when trying to navigate the platforming. Like, if you want me to run around the arena, you got to let me do it my way, game, okay? And, like I said before, the game is, is at its absolute best when it lets you indulge in the pure carnage that is the combat. But the momentum slows to a crawl when it makes you repeatedly do ho-hum platforming sections. I isolated on their own, they might make for a decent first-person platformer, but they seem out of place in a series like Doom. And another uh, pacing issue, I'll be a, a more minor one, I don't really care for the new hub area. It's a cool idea. But I'm personally not a fan of hub areas in my linear, you know, linear uh, level focused campaigns. Especially ones that are structured around separated levels. I think they make the pacing even choppier because it's like if Titanfall 2 shoved you into a hub world at the end of every mission. It, it, just, it just wouldn't work and it mostly doesn't here. I just don't think the hub area here is all that interesting. Plus, the name of your ship is, is lame. The, the Fortress of D Doom? Really? That's the best they could come up with? Seriously? Ugh. And speaking of padding, I'm not a fan of the greater emphasis on cutscenes. They don't drag on for an obnoxiously long time, like Death Stranding, <laughs> I guess. Um, I mean, there there are cutscenes in Titanfall 2, but like I said, the, uh, Titanfall 2's writing I think is so much better. I think its storytelling is so much stronger. Its character development is so much stronger. Its atmosphere, uh, in terms of like what's going on emotionally, is much stronger. Um, I just I just don't think they're all that interesting in Doom Eternal. The worst parts of Doom 2016 were when it would bring the action to a standstill in order to have you listen to chatter from one of the game's few noteworthy characters. Eternal does that quite a few times, and the only times I enjoyed them were when the Slayer was brutally murdering something or intimidating the human characters, which was pretty funny. 
the rest of the time they just felt like padding and look i'm usually the guy that says i need some kind of engaging story to work with or i'm gonna get bored but come on it's it's doom i don't need anything more from doom beyond here's your mission kill that thing go that's all i need anything more than that doesn't interest me it's also kind of annoying that with such a greater emphasis on story and cutscenes, the final cutscene is so anticlimactic and, and short. Um, the one time I would have accepted a slightly drawn out cutscene is when Id decided, Nope! Gotta end this shit real quick, goodbye! Uh, another thing I'm not all that crazy about from Eternal are the boss fights. Uh, aside from one that I thought was well structured and enjoyable, they're just kind of meh. The game thinks pushing the difficulty and spectacle to the extreme is what's going to make the fight exciting and, and memorable and enjoyable. But you need more than that in order to make a fight memorable and enjoyable. Um, I didn't really like the boss fights all that much in Doom 2016 either. I thought they were okay. But at least they were much more focused than they are here. Uh, most of the bosses boil down to either dealing with an annoying attack pattern or throwing everything at you and screaming at you to get good um look the the, bo the boss the best bosses in bloodborne and Sekiro aren't amazing because they're simply hard that's not the reason they're amazing they're amazing because they have great pacing great art design great level structure um they're able to balance the minor and major spectacle of it all and they tweak the flow of the fight just enough to where they feel like both a challenge and like manageable. And Doom Eternal doesn't have that with its bosses. It's either deal with this stupid attack pattern or here you go, here's everything in the kitchen sink, get good. And neither really work. And my final big sticking point is the one everyone has been complaining about. The fucking marauders uh they suck mega ass they are objectively terrible if i ever met anyone from id my first question would be what the hell were you guys thinking with adding these bastards in so in this case you haven't look in case you haven't heard already the marauders are a new type of enemy that work very differently from the other enemies in the game Marauders require a very specific strategy and distance to kill. They also come with an obscene number of, of tricks and just... They, they suck. Like, like, they come with an obscene number of tricks compared to the other enemies. They deal a crazy amount of damage. They throw laser energy at you. Absorb your shots with an energy shield. Can shoot you with a shotgun. Dash very quickly when you're trying to aim at them. And if you try to run, run away from them for too long, they send a fucking fire dog that deals a stupid amount of damage and won't go away until you shoot it. In short, I hate this fucker so goddamn much. I, I, oh, I hate this enemy so much. The only way to kill them is you have to wait for their stupid eyes to glow green before they do a very specific attack and then shoot them with the super shotgun. Rinse and repeat. No other strategy works. And it's deliberately designed that way. It's bullshit. In a 1v1 scenario, these ass wipes are mildly annoying at best. However, the big problem comes when the game throws in a marauder when you're trying to already deal with the usual horde of giant demons and tons of them, tons of variety of demons, and then this fucker comes in crashing the party. These guys disrupt the flow of combat hard. They should have been a one-time boss fight at the end of a level. They should have just been one of those bosses that like, oh, well that sucked. Well, I just never, I'm glad I never have to see that again. But they become not regular, but semi-regular enemies, especially in the second half of the game. And, and their presence is always unwelcome and monumentally irritating. They are horribly designed from a gameplay perspective, and they don't fit with the combat flow and pacing that the game is going for at all. Which is a shame, because I think they had potential to be great. Uh, at least one of them had the potential to be great as sort of a arch nemesis for the Doom guy. Maybe if he was the main villain of the game, or like the second in command, he would have been cool. And his, his 
attack patterns and strategy were completely stripped out and rebuilt from the ground up to be something much more akin to what the other enemies are like but as they are they are horrible if it were to patch out the marauders entirely from eternal it would automatically become a great game just just instantly it would instantly go up another level in my estimation that's how bad the marauders are that's how much they drag the party down. That's how much of a buzzkill they are. I fucking hate them. I hate the Marauders. I hope I never see them again in this series at all. And on a final note, I'm really surprised that there aren't microtransactions here. Uh, with Ly with uh, Eternal's bigger emphasis on being a live series with weekly challenges and seasons and, and other stuff, I fully expected Bethesda to pimp this game out like crazy with microtransactions but they haven't yet look I, I don't trust Bethesda to keep their word and never add them in but for now it's a positive that they aren't there Doom 2016 didn't have them and that game was an enormous success Eternal doesn't need them it's a really good game on its own so overall like I said final thoughts Doom Eternal is very, 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 very good. It slightly misses greatness. Just by the hair of its nuts misses greatness. And this is easily the best game Bethesda has released since the first, since Doom 2016. This is like hands down the best one. Hands down better than uh, the, the, the Wolfensteins. Hands down better than Fallout 76. Hands down better than Dishonored 2. Hands down better than Rage 2. I, this game is really good. Um, I, I guess id Software are like the saviors of Bethesda at this point. Because Bethesda is, is shit and they're terrible and I hate them now. But id Software, uh, they did great stuff with this game. This game is a lot of fun. Uh, would I recommend it? Absolutely. absolutely, fucking lootly Unless you have carpal tunnel syndrome or can't stand intense combat or have motion sickness with first person shooters then this game is is for you, 100%. If you don't have those medical problems, then go out and buy this game immediately. It's fantastic. It's a great stress reliever, and it, it just puts you through the fucking ringer and makes you feel like a fucking badass. Even if the Doom Slainer is a much squishier bitch this, this time around, he's still a badass, and I still love him. All right, thank you guys for watching. If you'd like to see, subscribe. Let me know what you think about Doom Eternal. And as always, I am Razorblade Mango. Thank you so much for watching, and I will catch you guys later. Peace.